In this video, I'll talk about the physical properties of matter. Remember that matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. And the physical properties of matter are characteristics of a substance that can be observed without changing the identity of the substance. This means that these are characteristics of um, things that we can see with our senses, how something looks or feels, whether it's a solid, liquid, or gas. We can determine the measuring, the melting point or the freezing point. We can measure the mass and the density of an object. Um, if you haven't heard density before, don't worry about it. I will explain it a little bit later. So let's take an apple, for example. An apple we can describe as being round. It's solid. It's yellow and red. Um, the skin is smooth. We can see that it floats in water. We know all of these things. It's an apple. So um, it's fairly easy to characterize this apple with physical properties. Even if we cut it in half, it's still an apple. It still has those properties and it still retains its identity. Um, that might seem obvious, but it, sometimes it's just really not obvious what the physical properties are of something. So the first physical property that I'm going to go over are the states of matter, which you probably have already heard about. So the state of matter is the physical form of matter. And most matter exists in solid, liquid, and gas, but there is a fourth one called plasma. The state of matter depends on how packed the atoms and molecules are. So in a gas, the atoms or molecules are very far apart, they're flying really fast, and they don't really have a shape. In a liquid, the atoms and molecules are much closer together. They're constantly slipping around each other. They don't have a definite shape, but they have a definite volume. In a solid, the atoms are tightly together, so they don't really move around, they just vibrate. And solids have a definite shape. So again, gases are not rigid. They don't have a fixed shape that will take the shape of the container. But if there's no container, then they will just keep expanding. Um, and the um, volume that we're thinking about is the amount of space occupied by an object. So the volume of gas is not fixed. It will just keep spreading. With a liquid, it's also not rigid. It doesn't have a fixed shape. It will just take the shape of its container but it will have a fixed volume. You can't expand the liquid to create more volume of the liquid. But in a solid, it's rigid, it has a fixed shape, it won't easily just change its shape, and it has a fixed volume. This is just another way to look at that. In a gas, the molecules are taking up the shape of its container. Let's say this is water vapor, so the water vapor molecules are just um, flying all around very fast. If this was liquid water, the liquid would take the shape of the container. Um, but again, you can't get more volume of the water. The liquid is just not going to spread throughout the container. And then uh, with a solid, this would be an ice cube. It retains its shape, it's rigid, and it has a fixed volume. The fourth state of matter is plasma, which is a charged gas. The electrons have been sort of separated out and they're just floating around. And this sometimes create a lighted object, like our sun, for example. Stars are just huge spheres of plasma. Um, plasma is also um, in a plasma television um, or in lightning strikes. So um, really cool, but kind of rare. Okay, so we know that when we go from a liquid to a gas, that means boiling. And when a substance transfers from a liquid to a solid, that is freezing, and when a substance um, transitions from a solid to a liquid that is melting. So the second physical property are the transition points, which is melting, boiling, and freezing. The definition of melting point is the temperature at which a solid changes to liquid. So for example, when ice turns into liquid water, that uh, melting point would be zero degrees Celsius. The freezing point is the temperature at which a liquid changes to a solid. So when water turns into a, uh, um, ice, that is zero degrees Celsius as well. And then lastly, the boiling point is the temperature at which a liquid changes to a gas. So the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. And if you take a look at that temperature gauge, 
it stays steady at 100 degrees Celsius. So even though water melts and freezes and turns into water vapor, it's still water. It retains its identity even though it goes through those transitions. Um, just to have another couple of examples for a melting point, um, wax candles have a relatively low melting point. They melt at 37 degrees Celsius. So you could take a candle out on a hot day in the summer and it might melt outside versus iron, for example, which has a very high melting point at over 1500 degrees Celsius. Um, the boiling point is over 2800 degrees Celsius, but still in solid form or liquid form, it's still iron. It doesn't lose its identity. And that brings us to number three physical property, which is malleability. Malleability is the ability of a substance to be hammered or rolled into different shapes. So hard metals such as iron, platinum, and tungsten are really hard. They're not malleable. We can't easily bend them into different shapes. But soft metals such as copper, um, aluminum, and gold, they're fairly malleable. We can easily bend them into different shapes. Copper, for example, we can um, bend and roll that out into copper electrical wiring, but it's still copper. It doesn't lose its identity. And this brings us to physical property number four, electrical conductivity. And that is the ability of a substance to transfer electricity. And when we say transfer electricity, we just mean moving electricity from one place to another place. And we often wrap electric, um, electric wires in plastic because copper is an excellent electrical conductor, but plastic is not a good electrical conductor. Instead, it will just insulate the electricity. And that brings us to number five, which is thermal conductivity, which is the ability of a material to transfer heat. Again, transferring heat just means moving heat from one place to another. So steel would be a good thermal conductor. We have a lot of stainless steel pots and pans, which transfers the heat from the fire to your food. Whereas wool, for example, is not a good thermal conductor. It won't transfer heat away from you very well. Instead, it insulates you. It'll keep the heat inside. Okay, physical property number six is solubility. This is the ability of a substance to dissolve into another substance. For example, salt dissolves easily into water. So we say that salt is highly soluble in water. Sand, on the other hand, is not easily soluble in water, so we say it has low solubility. And that brings us to our last physical property, number seven, which is density. Sand is made out of tiny grains of rock, so it doesn't dissolve, it actually just sinks in the water. And it sinks because it's more dense than water. Density is the measure of the amount of mass in a given amount of volume. So you can think about this is how much matter is packed into an amount of substance. So in the box on the left, we have a lot of red dots packed into one box. So that box would have a high density relative to the box on the right, which has fewer red dots in it. So that would be at a lower density than the box on the left. So it's important to know right now that density is not necessarily about how heavy an object is. I'll explain density in detail in another video, but it's not about how heavy something is. It's really about how much stuff, how much matter is packed into a substance. The density of water is the standard at which we measure all other densities. So um, it's easy to think in terms of whether something floats or sinks in water. Um, for example, the apple that we had in the beginning of the video, apples float. And so we can say that apples are less dense than water. And we know that because they float. But what about ships? They are made of lots and lots of metal, things that we would normally think sink in water. However, a ship and all of its contents floats on the water. So it has to be less dense than water. because, And we know this because it floats, it doesn't sink. I know that's counterintuitive, but it has to do with the size, how much stuff is packed into the ship and all its containers relative to the size that it takes up. 
and so it floats on water. It's less dense than water. So to summarize the seven physical properties that you need to know, the first is the state of matter, whether something is a solid, liquid, gas, or plasma. The transition points, so the melting point, boiling point, and freezing point. Malleability, how flexible something is. Um, electrical conductivity, this is how uh, the ability for something to transfer electricity from one place to another. Thermal conductivity, the ability for something to transfer heat from one place to another. Um, solubility, the ability for something to dissolve in another substance. And finally, density, how much matter is packed in. And it's really important to know that we observe all of these things without the identity of the substance changing. These are things that we can observe with our senses.